Good morning, everyone. This is Abby from CSSI Technologies. Welcome to our Management Reporter webinar for intermediate users. We are going to go ahead and get started today. Um, Deborah is going to be walking you through um, some fun facts and fun new stuff for you to learn about Management Reporter. So I'm going to have her introduce herself, then we'll jump right into it. We're going to be talking about some base CBR and other fun codes that might help you in your business and some other helpful tips. Now we are asking that we hold questions um, to the end. However, as you think of them, feel free to send them along in the chat feature of the webinar. Um, if you want to say hello or good morning, so I know everybody has found that, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Deborah. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. As Abby said, my name is Deborah Newcomer. I've been with CSSI getting close to 20 years now, uh, working with GP and anything related to GP, such as implementation, training and support. Um, report writers, in addition to MR, I used to work with FRX, uh, Crystal Reports, SQL Reporting Services, uh, Refreshable Reports, anything to, to get data out of GP as well as integrations with third-party products and uh, getting data into GP. Um, so enough about me. Let's get started and take a look at Management Reporter. Get logged back in here. All right, so um, if any of you were able to join us for our webinar on Management Reporter for Beginners, um, you saw that Rochelle gave you the basics of Management Report as far as how to, to build a report, how a report is made up of building blocks. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go into that just a little bit to review. So I'm in the Management Reporter screen. Hopefully you've all seen this before and have been in here to generate reports at least. But we're, we're going to help you to design new reports and, and make changes and make things look prettier. So if I just pick a report, a balance sheet, you've got your report definitions. So these are the reports that you generate. And then each report is made up of building blocks. They can be There can be two or three building blocks. You have a row format, which is where you define what you want to appear on each row and where you want to have totals, headings, so forth. I'm going to come back in here and we're going to go through some things to make it a little fancier and how to do calculations. You then have a column layout, which is where you define what you want to appear in each column, so whether you want a month to date, year to date. Um, you can have budgets in a column. You can calculate variances, many different types of columns. So you can see over here, I've got all these column definitions. And the point of having these building blocks is that you can mix and match. So you, I may open this, but then I can pick, maybe I want to use that row, but this time I want to see it with a different column. So you just mix and match and then generate. You may also have a tree in your report, which is, um, let me just pick a tree here. I've got a Fabricam, which is the sample company that comes with GP. This is where you can do um, consolidated statements. Like if you have more than one company, you can combine them here and just select which company you want. Or um, your units can be any of the segments of your GL account structure. So I've got a, a division segment and a depart department segment. So those are different units on my tree so that I can generate the report for the summary of all units, but then I can also drill down and see my financial statement for just a particular division or department within a division. So that's the point of a tree. So now, um, then what you do is you pick your period and the year that you want to generate the report for. Now I'm using the sample data and there's most of the data is back in 2017 in this version of GP that I'm using. So I'm going to, I don't want a tree, generate my report. 
And then you get this queue status. Now this will show, while my report's generating a little bit about this, this will keep a list of all the reports that have been completed in the past seven days. If you don't want to see that, all you need to do is uncheck that box. You can also, let me go back. That report queue window stays open. You can see that little pesky window. If you don't want to have to close that every time you've gener generated a report, you can just check that box and it won't, uh, it won't open anymore. Or actually it'll close as soon as it's done generating the report. So now here's my report viewer. So I'm in the report viewer. The viewer is a different program than the, the report designer. So you may have some users that only access the viewer, meaning they can't change any reports, they can only view what someone else has already generated. Because when you're in the report writer, you have, if you look down here at the lower left-hand corner, this report library, this is where all those reports you've already generated are located. And they're, by default, they just go into a, a folder called library. But if I expand that, you can see I've got a public folder, and I've got a, I created a folder for myself to use today for the webinar. So you can create new folders just by right-clicking and click a new folder, give it a name, and then you can move reports around. So if I go back to my library, <clears throat> excuse me, and pick a report I've generated, I can do a couple of things. I can rename, let's say, call this April. So I've renamed it. I can then move it. Clicking on the, you can either right click or you can use the buttons at the top. Move. Now, do I want to move just the most recent one or all versions? Because when you generate a report over and over again, you're going to get lots of different reports. So you can move them all or just the most recent. So I'm going to move just the most recent one and I'll put it in my, my new folder. Click on OK. So then when I click on my folder over here, you'll see I've got my report there. So this is just a great way to organize your reports. Um, if you have reports that maybe only certain people can see certain reports, put them each into their own folder and then what you can do is you can assign permissions to that folder. So maybe you have department heads that can only see the expenses for their department. Then they would have their own folder. You go to permissions and then you can add, and you can add which user can access that folder, and you can even create user groups. So you can assign a group of users to a folder. So that's helpful if, you're, if you have a lot of users just using the viewer and restricting what they can see. Now, by default, we go back to Management Reporter. Close this for a second. Up under Tools, options. This is where your default location is. So we're telling you to go to the library. If I want to generate a bunch of reports and have them go directly into one of my folders, I can do that here. Just once I say OK and save that new location, that'll stay that way until you change it back. All right, so that's just a bit about the viewer. Now I'm going to get into uh, some new codes or some codes you may not have used before. I have this report called Income Statement Percent. Now if I take a look at this, uh, I've already generated this report so I don't have to waste time waiting for it to generate. So I'm going to jump back to my viewer and in my webinar folder I have this income statement that I had generated earlier. So I can double click on it and view the report. Now I wanted to show you this one because it's got percentages. So I calculate, I created two columns to show me percentages for the month and the year. And these are, these percentages here at the top, these are my percent of sales, and then these numbers down here are my percent of expenses. <clears throat> so these percentages are being based on my total sales or total revenues. These percentages here are based on my total operating expenses. 
<coughs> excuse me. So now to show you how I did that, we're going to jump back to the designer. And hopefully you all know how the base is used. This is my base period, and this is my base year. So when I'm in a column layout, anywhere where you see the base, that's referring to that base period and base year when I generate the report. Okay, so that's, that's important and that's used a lot. And I'm going to show you how we can use that in other types of columns. But now to get my percentages, you'll see I have a calculated column. And this is my formula where I'm telling it to take column B, which is my month to date, divided by what's called a base row. So now what does that mean? That's a little different than this base. This is base row. So somewhere I'm, somewhere I'm telling the report what my base row is so I know what it, how to calculate my percentage. So if I go back, I'm going to go into my row. Here you'll see that base row is referring to this code right here, CBR, which is change base row. And by the way, when you want to assign codes here, if I double click, it shows me all my codes that are available and a little description about what, what they mean and what they're used for. So this is the change base row for percentage allocation. That's just what I need. So I'm saying change my base row, and my base row is this number right here, 280. So I'm, it's looking at row 280, which is my total revenues. So if you remember back in my column, I was telling it to take my month-to-date column, divided by the base row, which is this right here, divided by total revenues. So that's how I got all the percentages for the sales numbers, actually down through my gross profit, I think it was. Now for my expenses, I want to show percentages of the total expenses. So I need to change my base row, that's what CBR is, change base row now to 760, which is my total expenses. So it's always going to use the last base row assigned. So everything going down my report now is going to be based on the total operating expenses. Expenses. If I wanted my total net income to be based on the total revenues, I would have to put in another CBR and reference that row up above. Make sense? It makes sense to me. <laughs> so that's... Um, that's that we get asked that a lot how to do percentages. So it's just remembering to use CBR. That's what that means. Change base row. So now if we take a look at some other columns that use the base, I have I'm going to close this. You can do rolling reports like rolling 12 months or rolling quarters, and you do that by using that base and a little calculation. So I have one called Rolling 12 Months Expenses. And by the way, you all should have these defaults. When Management Reporter is installed, you get these defaults. So you can take one, you know, start with an existing report, and you can always do a file, save as, and then save it under a new name. Same goes for when you're changing columns or you want to edit a column. When you're in a column or a row, Go to File, Save As, and create a new one. That way you don't mess up a good working report. So now this is my rolling 12 months report. And you can see I've got this base. Remember, the base is what the base year period that I've used to generate the report. So I've got my base year. So it's all current year, maybe. And the period is... This is a 12-month ruling report. So if I go all the way to the right, base, so this is my current month, and then my previous month, and back all 12 months. So that's how you just get a dynamic rolling 12 months. That's always based on the, the date you use when you generate the report. I've kind of used that same idea with this 12-month ruling expenses, but this is one column. So... When I gen generate my report, you can see the periods covered are base back through base 11. So I'm going to get 12 months all in one column, which I think I have a sample of. 
So now I'm back in my report viewer and I showed you this one with the percentages. If I want to show you a different report that I've already generated, I just click on Report Library. And now I just have to remember where I put them. So here's the rolling 12 months report. Don't have a lot of numbers out there, but you can see how that looks all 12 months. And then if I go back to my report library, I think I might have stuck one of the others in one of these folders. Okay, so then here's the one with one column. So this is just 12 months, just one column as of the current period. All right. So that's pretty much it on base. It's just you can use the base for the uh, year as well. So if you want to have current year and then prior year, you would just make the prior year column base minus one. And if you want to have three years, just have three different columns with a base, base minus one, base minus two. All right. Some other codes. I'm not going to change this. Let's take a look at, I'm going to go back to my income statement. And I'm going to go into the row format. Because some other codes that you can use um, in addition to the CBR. Oh, I know what I want to show you. This other, this related formulas, rows, and units. This is used also for relating one row to another. So on here, this row, you'll see it, this is just an underline because it's right above my above my total. Well, maybe maybe this total row will be zero. If that's the case, I don't want this underline to print when I don't have a total below it. So I can base this underline on row 280. So if my this total is zero, I won't get the underline. I always do that for all my underlines that are above totals. Just always relate it to the total underneath. A couple other things we can do. Actually, I did want to go into a different report. I wanted to go in this one because I got a lot of weird codes in here. So this is similar to my other report. It's just I have it point into a different row. So I've added some other formats here. It's very colorful. <laughs> But I just want to show you that this, you can make your reports colorful. It works pretty much like Excel. You have the fill color. Mm -hmm. Now I can go up to the fill color, pick a color. So you can do bold, italicized, all of the different options. Exactly. You've got, yep, the font sizes, styles, yep, uh, font colors. Okay. So it works just like a spreadsheet. You can also do, right, I'm going to just going to go down through some of these format codes, and actually I want to show you the results when I generated that report, what it looked like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to move that over a little bit so I can show you both the results and the formatting, maybe. Oh, I guess I can't do it on here. All right. We won't bother with that. But this, remember what I said, if you double click here, you can see the codes and a little description of what they'll do. So if you want a title for some reason to print on the right of the page, you can do that. You can also center. I've got a center here. So it all depends on how your report's laid out, where, where you want the things to print. Um, I've got the colors. I've got... This is this is really nice, this remark, REM, remark only. This is ignored on the report. So if you want to put notes in here on how you've calculated things so you remember how you did it or if you want someone else to know how things are calculated when they're working on a report. So this is just a remark, notes for you, and you're not going to see it on the report. Hmm. So if I go back here, you'll see under my gross profits, I don't see those notes. So we have a question. Um, when you make the changes, the font colors, the background colors, all of that stuff, do you have to save it in order for it to show up on the report when you print it? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't auto-save. Right. You want to, sometimes 
Usually when you've made a change to a, a format, a row or a column, and you click on the X, it'll ask if you want to save it. Although I recently had it happen where it didn't ask me. So always to be safe, click on the Save button, and then uh, generate your report. So yes, to be safe, always save often. Even when you're not done, if you made a lot of changes, it wouldn't hurt to save it in case you know, power outage, who knows what could happen. hate losing lots of work. All right, so you also see you can draw boxes. So I put a box around my operating expenses. Oh, there's my title that I centered. My revenue I put on the right. That looks kind of funny, so I really don't want to keep it that way. But I've got a box around my expenses, and that's using this BXB. Box begin or begin box, however you want to say it. Begin box around rows. So it's going to start my box here, and then I go down and put in a box complete, complete box. So that's how it knows where to start and end my box. You can also do different lines. Um, here you'll see I've got a line two, which is a thick line. Down here I'll, I'll show you in a, in a minute. Well, it's not easy to, to see, but there's a dotted line, thick line, followed by thin, thin followed by a thick. And it's probably hard to see the differences here, but this actually is a dotted line. You just can't see it. I can barely see the dots. But just things to make it look pretty. And as you see, I've added a, a, the company logo. So you can add logos and pictures, images to your reports. I think I can close or minimize that for now. Um, did I cover all these codes? I did. Uh, another handy code is in this print control column. Here again, if you double click, it'll show you what codes are available and what they do. In this case, this XD, this will suppress the row in account detail report. So if you have reports that you generate to the screen, and then you can double click on it and it takes you down and shows you the account detail, which you should, which is very handy. But you may have some uh, types of expenses or some rows where you don't want people to drill down and see the detail. So if you put the XD on just that row, they can drill down on every other row but that one. So maybe you don't want to see pe have people seeing the different types of salary expense accounts. That will prevent them from drilling down. They'll still see the total, but they can't drill down. All right, and I think, do I have anything here? Oh, then you can use, uh, if you want to use currency format in a particular row. Also, non-printing, this is available in the columns, column rows, is, or a column format as well. A non-printing row is if you need to include an, a row with accounts to use in a calculation, but you don't want to see that row on the report, then you may use that NP for non-printing row. All right, I think I got all the code I wanted to show you in here. Oh, actually, no, while I'm in here, uh, if you ever need to add new accounts manually, you know, this, and here again, it's like a spreadsheet. You can highlight rows, right-click, insert rows. When you're inserting a lot of rows, these codes will eventually get used up. Like if I try to insert a bunch of rows in here, see, I go from 430 to 433. Well, I can't fit all those numbers in there. If you can reset these row codes very easily by just going to the top, go up to edit, oops, edit, renumber rows. What code do you want to start with? I'll start with 100 and increment by 30. You can change that, whatever you want. That renumbers all your row codes and updates all the formulas. So now you've got plenty of room to, to insert more, more uh, rows. You can also, if you have a lot of new accounts that you've entered in GP and they need added in Management Reporter, you can easily add a range by going to Edit, Insert Rows from Dimensions, and then you tell it what you want to add. Now, I've got, remember I showed you the tree that has my division and department. So they're over my tree. All I care about in my row format is my main account segment. So let's say I want to add 
I create a new account, so I go from 6,000 to 6,300. I click on OK, and then boom, it puts them all in for you. So that's just a nice time saver. Now, of course, if you want to delete rows, highlight, delete row. Okay, so I think I'm good in my row format. So now, see now it did ask me if I want to save. In this case, I don't. Now let's take a look at some column codes. We have, uh, here's that print control, the NP that, I, that we have in the row format. Again, it's to include this column in the calculation, but you don't want to have it print on the report. This one is kind of nice if you do like that rolling 12 months report, or if you have a report that's very wide, that it you print landscape, but it still prints more than one page, you may want to repeat a column on each page. Like if that happens, I want to see my account description on each page. So I would just put an RP in there and my Account description will repeat. Uh, you can also have it wrap text. If, if your description is long, longer than the column allows, you can have it wrap the text. Something else you can do in uh, the column is if you're using a reporting tree, you can have, like, Remember, my tree has divisions and departments. Maybe I want to see each division as a column on my report. I can do that by using, have to have the tree assigned, but then you can assign a reporting unit to a column. So if I double click on this, here's my tree. So maybe I want column, this first column to be my admin department or division. So I'm just going to get all the admin accounts in this column. I know this is year to date, but just to, to show you, then I can have another column be all sales. So that's how you can get a particular division or any segment of your GL account that's in your tree, make it a column instead of dividing it out in the row, which a lot of people do. You can also do um, dimension filters. So you don't need to have a tree assigned for this, but maybe you want to see just a certain range of accounts I double click on this, I can filter this column by any of my segments, not just my main account, but any of my segments. So it's, you know, if, if a segment is not in my tree, then this is just another way to filter that column. Or I can do a filter and say, I only want to see these account numbers in this column. And this, this is how you add dimensions to your rows. Same idea, where you can have a range. You could have a second range. Maybe I want to take this account range and then subtract out another account range. Just another way of calculating and filtering what's going to appear in the column. So how do you set up the reporting tree? We can do that. So to set up a reporting tree is very similar to how I showed you how to add accounts in the row. Like if I go into, I'm going to go into my tree. So now if you want to start a new tree, you can just go up to new. And I'm going to do a new reporting tree. So I start with a blank tree. Now I can automatically add all my GL segments by going up to edit. And then, oops, edit. Insert reporting units from dimensions, similar to what we did in the row. So you click on that. Which segments do you want to include? You know, if you just want to have a division tree, then you can uncheck the other segments. I'm going to just let it do all. And then you can also filter, do a from and to. Say you only want this division to that division or department to department. And then OK. There it is. Seems easy enough. Easy enough. And again, it's like a spreadsheet. You know, if you don't want, didn't want all that detail, 
You can clean up your tree and delete reporting units or delete the ones you don't want. Pick and choose. It's also a good idea if you're going to reference, like I showed you how we could have uh, re certain units in the column, you're probably going to want to see the column header be your division, your unit name, not this number. So you always want to, I kind of did mine backwards, but you always want to fill in this description because this description then you can have print as your column header if you're referencing the unit in the column. Just to jump back to my column to show you what I mean there. When I did this reporting unit, say I want my admin. Now I can come up here to my column header, and you have in your headers, you have this insert auto text. So you can pick different codes to use. I normally use these for, you know, the the month name and the fiscal year name. But if we're going to use a reporting unit from the tree, you can use select unit description and then that'll print your, in my case, it would print my uh, division name administration in the column header. Okay, get rid of that. Um, just continuing down here a little bit, you can also do restrict columns by date range. Like if I double click in here, I can say, let's say I want weekly columns. I can start with April 1st and go to seven. And this one I could do April 8th through the 14th. That's one way. But the disadvantage to this is then every month you have to come in here and change these dates, which is a pain. So instead, you don't have to use date ranges. You can just use days. So in this case, I, if this is going to be a week, my week one, I just can do one to seven, and then eight to fourteen. Now I, my report will change dynamically each month, and I don't have to change dates. So that's pretty cool for doing a weekly, even daily. You can even have daily columns if you want. And then the last row in here is this justification. So do I want my column left justified, centered, or right justified? I think by default, the amount, the columns default right justified, and text columns are left justified. Also in my percentage column, I just didn't point out that I've put some formatting in there because on the output, I want to see a percent percentage, but you have all these different formats or masks that you can use, just kind of like Excel again. All right. Uh, let's see, what do I have next? Going through this very fast. <laughs> Any questions to throw, to throw in yet? Um, just some, some other things here. A cool tool is if you don't want to create a report from scratch, there's this thing called Report Wizard. And this is kind of cool because it, it will format for you and everything. I can't move my window down there. All right, so the first screen, and it's just like a wizard. You just click on Next and go through the different the setups. You pick which template you want to start with whether you want a balance sheet, income statement, or trial balance. Oh, I remembered something I want to show about trial balance. So you pick your template, and then, like if you were doing the income statement with an actual budget, actual, and then you could select your budget. So this will pull in all the budgets that you have in GP. So you select which budget you want to use. I'm going to just go back and do a basic balance sheet for now, keep it simple. And then we go to next. And then it shows you report sections. So these are all the different sections it will create for you on your balance sheet. You just have to indicate which accounts go into which sec 
uh, section. So you can see Fabricam has lots of different cash accounts. I can select them all by using the shift or I can use the control to select individual. I'm just going to do all my cash accounts and insert. So now all these account numbers will appear in that section and they disappear from over here so I know that I've already used them. And then we go, to, oops, I want to just do a couple more, yeah. So then you select your next section, in this case other current assets, select all the accounts to go into that section and add and so on. And you see in the balance sheet the the assets and the depreciation are separate. So I would just have to pick and choose my assets, which I'm not going to do them all, but a couple. All right, so you get the idea there. Go down through all the sections to all your accounts are used. That's nice that they show you all your accounts so you know if you've missed any or not. Then we go to next. This is where you can Rearrange things if you want to move accounts up or down. We'll just go to next. Uh, this is where you format and preview your report. I, so you can add shade total lines. So what's going to look like? You can re create a report for the entire company, or you can create multiple reports based on these segments. I'm just going to create one report for the entire company, give it a name and a description if you want. You don't have to have a description, I always just make it the same. And then I, it'll generate for me right away if I want it to, if I check this box to generate the report after the wizard closes yeah. and set my period and year, next and finish. All right, so it should be generating my report. You see up here I have my balance sheet new, so there it created my new report. And I can see in my queue that it was generated, now it's complete. And then there it is. So I'll put all the accounts where I told it to. And then at least it gives you a start. You can go in the row format and clean things up or summarize uh, summarize your rows. If I go into my balance sheet new, let's say I want several of these accounts all in one row. I want my 1100 through 115 all in one row. I think you probably all know this, but you can come in here and just do 1100 to 1105 which now will sum those all in one row and then get rid of my these that I no longer need. Okay, how are we doing on time? Good, we do have another question. Okay. Um, does Management Reporter handle conditional formatting? It does. Uh, we'll probably save that for the, the, the next webinar or I can send it. Okay. Yeah, it does. Um, you can do if-thens, which I haven't done in a while, so I'm going to have to review that, but with if-thens, you can do conditional formatting, yes. We can push that out in our um, latest newsletter. So if you do not currently um, receive our newsletter, feel free to send us an email at support at CSSI.com, and we'll make sure you get that. Something else I wanted to show is uh, you can do trial balance reports in Management Reporter. I know GP gives you a trial balance, but usually it's it's kind of busy and it's dif very difficult to get into Excel. So if you want your, to send your balance sheets to Excel, I would use Management Reporter to do that. Now, just an easy way to do a trial balance is I've got here a summary trial balance I'm going to open. Oops, I'm in my column layout. Let's go back to my reports. Here we go. So, summary trial balance report. 
uses this row, which just has this one row. You can use asterisk as a wild card. That's telling the, the row just to pull all my accounts. So I don't have to manually come in here and you know, insert them all. And then when I create a new report in GP, I have to remember to insert it into my row. This will always give me all my accounts. So now when I generate it, it's going to first give me all my accounts totaled on one row, but then you can just with one click drill down and see all the account detail. So my report's complete. Should be coming up. All right, so see I told it all accounts on one row, which it did. But now if I just double click on any of those amounts, now I've got all my account That's details. pretty cool. That's really cool. And then with this Excel, easily send it to a spreadsheet. And when you send to a spreadsheet, you want to always remember to check this box to open the spreadsheet right away. If you don't, it's just going to create the spreadsheet file in this location, and then you have to go open it. I don't know why that isn't defaulted, but I would think you'd want to see your spreadsheet right away. Now I'm not going to do that, so we have to wait. But I just want to show you that trial balance looks similar to the one in GP. I don't like having the beginning balance and then debits and credits. I just want to see my account and my any balance. So I created a trial balance with ending balance only where I started with that same summary trial balance. If we go in to look at the columns, see I need all the columns. I need the opening balance and the debits and credits to calculate the closing balance because this closing balance isn't really stored in GP anywhere. Only the summary numbers are stored. So I still need to calculate it. So I need these columns, but I've used that NP print control code. So these reports don't print. I'm only going to get my closing balance. So now if we generate this one, you'll see that's what we get. Makes it a lot cleaner. And then this one prints portrait, so I print less pages. And again, I still first get my total sum, and there we go. I, I like that much better. Okay. Uh, something else just I like to point out. When we install Management Reporter. Some, sometimes users don't understand that Management Reporter is a separate program and you have to launch it outside of GP. So I always like to create a shortcut in GP so they can it can be launched from within GP, of course. So if you've ever, ever used these shortcuts, it's very handy for external programs. So you can create a shortcut for Management Reporter. You just have to know where the uh, file is located. So that's uh, located under Program Files, Microsoft Dynamics, ERP, and Manager Reporter. And you got to click, 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 drill down. But the actual uh, application itself is called Report Designer EXE. So just by signing that here, then you can easily launch Manager Reporter from within GP. Mm, that's so convenient. It, yeah, it makes it easier for new users. All right. Uh, I think I covered it. All, all righty. Are there any questions? If you have a question, please put it down in the chat feature. Here again, you have folders just like in the viewer, so you can create new folders here as well. And organize your reports. I okay, one for report testing, so I don't bog down my list. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do you add your company logo in a report? All right, so that is, I think I had that in my income statement. That is, if you go in the into the report under headers and footers, 
there's images. So you would go to add, browse out to wherever your logo file is. I don't have another one to add. And then insert. There. I have my logo there. I think I can add it again. No. Well, so you can it's only, already there, but you yeah. can only have one. I think if I maybe moved it down here. Okay. Yeah. And so if it was a different name, if we had a, se a separate image, yeah, she could have. They can go in any of the sections. Very cool. So yes, headers and footers, images. Get rid of that. And while I'm in here, just this is also where you see this insert auto text again, like we saw in the column headers. So I have you know, pages, number of pages that print, uh, the print date, print time. Those are all these insert auto text. And they have lots of different text to choose from related to the company or your tree, lots of date and time, you know, long form, short form, page numbers text from the reporting tree, and just other stuff. While they're um, waiting to see if they have any other questions, do we want to talk about a little bit about Power BI? Mm -hmm. A different kind of reporting? Yes. Let's go back to our slide. For those of you who have not heard of Power BI, this is a really great tool that uh, you can use with GP. Um, it works with basically any SQL databases, with Excel, but it's a great tool to analyze your data. And you just, it, it involves setting up a link to your data, and then it's very easy to create these graphs. Um, I think we're gonna do a webinar on this one of these days where we can show you how simple it is to just drag and drop. Once you have your data defined, you drag your data into a graph, and then you can easily just rearrange, uh, you know, the, the images. You can have, here you can see we just have numbers that's pulling, doing summaries. Um, great way to analyze your data quickly and easily. It's live data. So if you haven't heard of it, check it out. It's pretty cool. Lots of fun. It is. It is really fun. And we use it internally here at CSSI. It's really helpful. Um, and if you have any questions or you already have Power BI but want some help getting things hooked up to your Microsoft Dynamics GP, feel free to contact us. Um, we'd love to help you. And I don't know if we have any other questions. Um, if you do have any other questions, please put them down in the chat box so we can help you now. We are recording today's webinar, so we'll ensure everyone has a um, receives the recorded version so you can have it playback or share with other, f other folks in your organization. Um, we also ask that if there are topics for future webinars that you would like to have us cover, we'd love to hear some feedback on, you know, suggested topics for the future. So please feel free to put those in the chat today as well and we'll keep track of those and add them to our queue. Said that. That one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we're also going to send out with the recorded webinar um, the outline that Deborah used today for all of her notes and the fun kind of stuff that she has. That way you have it in writing and don't have to keep watching the webinar and pausing over and over and over again, which is normally how I end up, <laughs> how I end up doing things. But um, yeah, so feel free to add topics down in the chat. We're so glad you were able to join us today. If you need anything in the future, please let us know. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help you from a GP partner aspect, we provide support, webinars, we've done um, user groups in the past, and we've been talking about doing some of those in the future. So if there's anything that we can do to help you, we would love to hear from you. Otherwise, um, I think that wraps up today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, 
get a hold of us, you can check out our website at CSSI.com. We can be reached through support at CSSI.com, and we also can be found on LinkedIn um, and Facebook, social media in general, so feel free to follow along so you can stay up to speed on all the fun stuff that we have going on at CSSI. Thank you again for joining. Thank you, Deborah, for all your help today, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.